Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network for Entrepreneurs. I'm Dan Hanford, and my wife, Danae, and I interview successful people sharing stories behind tough decisions that they've had to make along their journey as an entrepreneur. On the podcast with us today, we have Luke Williams. Luke, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me. Well, Luke, we want you to get us started by talking to us about your background as an entrepreneur and where your current focus is right now. Yeah, so my background is I've been an entrepreneur my entire life, really back since I was eight, selling lemonade on campus while my dad was going to law school. I've constantly been involved in either a side gig or having my own company, building my own companies and consulting with entrepreneurs now. So that's kind of my entrepreneurial background. Right now, my, my biggest thing is just connecting with people. I have a goal of having a 20-minute conversation every day. So I meet people on LinkedIn or on Twitter, and uh, I take the conversation offline and have an actual phone call or a Skype meeting. And that's led to well over 200 conversations uh, and people in over 12 countries. Well, and then today, this can be your 20-minute conversation. I'm going to count it. So yeah, <laughs> I'm going to count it. So my book was released in, I guess it was no, November of uh, 2018. So, you know, that's, that's been a big focus of mine is to talk to folks about the book and talk to folks about the, the Live 20 method. So yeah, I have a lot going on and uh, I certainly appreciate being on the show and, and, and chatting it up. Well, I want you to start us off with a tough decision that I like to call the sore thumb tough decision. It's a tough <laughs> decision that, you know, when you sit down and have a cup of coffee with somebody or you have one of these conversations that you're talking about and, you know, they say, you know, what's a really, you know, tough decision that you really had to make and that really sticks out with you that you learned a lot of lessons through it, but it didn't have that good of an outcome. So can you share that tough decision with us? Yeah, absolutely. So I was pretty new in my career. I was under 30 years old, so fair, fairly young for a business owner. And I wanted to open this boutique wine and liquor beer shop in this small town. I did a little bit of research, but not a lot. I was able to get funding from a bank. And I had a lot of people that were telling me that it wasn't going to work. They were telling me the baby's ugly, right? And I didn't want to listen. I didn't do a lot of market research. I thought, you know what? If I like this store, everybody else will. So I stocked the shelves with really high top shelf liquor and wine and craft beer and all this interesting stuff. We had leather couches and we had TVs and we had carpeted floor. We had wine tastings and it was the coolest place in town. But at the end of the day, people just wanted Bud Light and vodka, right? And so, so the tough decision was without having this data and with all these people telling me that it was the wrong thing to do, the tough decision was I did it anyway. And it failed miserably. <laughs> and after a, a couple of years, we ended up having to shut down. And it was good in the end, in retrospect, because I learned a ton. You know, failure can be a great lesson. But that was tough to, to move forward, even though the odds were against me. And, and a lot of people were saying that it wasn't going to work. They were right, as it turned out. But uh, <laughs> I still tried. So what are a couple of the specific lessons you can articulate from that experience? Don't let your ego guide you. I thought I had all the answers. I didn't want to spend time doing market research. I didn't want to listen to what I thought were the old people at SCORE. I didn't want to listen to the resources at SBA. I didn't want to listen to all those advisors. I didn't want to listen to, to the people that were disagreeing with me. And that is such a mistake. I didn't take on a mentor, even though folks offered to help. And the, the lessons I learned were, you know, don't let your ego get in the way. And find people that have opinions that are opposite of yours because they just might be right. I think that's super valuable is, is to find those people that will, will tell you the truth and will, will tell you honestly what their point of view is and what mm -hmm. they see in you know, a, a loving and right way. But that's they're, right. they're not, they're not going to hide that from you because those are the people that are going to be really valuable for you. Absolutely. And determining if, they, if they're coming from a good place, if people are coming from a place of good perspective and they're well-intentioned, if, if you're getting feedback from those people and they're you know, warning you or guiding you against making a decision, it's important to at least listen and consider what they're saying. I'm just sitting here trying to think about you know, the different 
you know, tough decisions that we've had, you know, since we've started this podcast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the, one of the running themes is don't always listen to all the negativity. And Uh, this is, this is kind of, you know, contrary to what we've talked about. And I don't necessarily think it's really contrary, but mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of, you know, a different way to look at things. And I think what you're saying is, is, you know, don't, don't just, you know, take it at face value for whatever everybody says that's negative, but, you know, balance the negative with the, the, the data analysis that has been right. done to be able to make that proper decision. Right. Positive feedback or negative feedback are just data points to be considered. And right. if, if you have an open mind and you're listening to people, don't, and you don't need to act on every piece of advice. Advice is only advice. I mean, it's, it's not until it becomes an action where it becomes something that's decided. So uh, absolutely, keep an open mind. Consider all the data points. Don't let ego steer the ship. And yeah, people will not like the idea. People will love the idea. And it's important to, to balance all those data points. So Luke, I'm curious as to, you know, looking back at that idea that you had, Mm -hmm. do you feel like it was just categorically a bad idea? Or if you had the opportunity, maybe given, you know, the opportunity to do it again, and there's some things you would do differently, do you think it is actually, you know, a workable idea that just needed to be handled differently? I think it was a terrible idea. I (laughs) I think categorically, it was in the wrong market. It was... It, it just it just wasn't something that met a demand. There, there was just no demand. It was just something that I thought people wanted. I thought I had enough, you know, people in the community that would support it. I thought we had an, uh, a lack of competition and lack of options, but it, it just was a bad idea. Uh, it was just not in the right market. Now that concept in a larger market could do very well. It just was not something for small town Iowa. Well, and that's exactly what I was going to say is, is from, from, from a small town market, I don't think it, that's, that's, that's a very good idea either Right. But in a larger market or where I've actually seen that particular business model, you know, do pretty well is in airports because people yeah. are sitting there for sure. an hour, two hours, you know, they don't necessarily want to go get a bite to eat, but they'll go and sit down at a, and have a you know, glass of wine or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, in a, in a wine bar or something. Right. Well, let's shift here a little bit and talk okay. about a tough decision that you've had to make as an entrepreneur that had a really good and positive outcome and some of the lessons you learned through that one. Yeah, certainly. So I don't think entrepreneurship is a position or entrepreneurship necessarily means that you're owning a business. So I, I, I consider myself somebody who's always been an entrepreneur. So even when I was working for somebody else, I still had this entrepreneurial spirit and, and, and mindset. The decision that I made came in about 2012 when I decided to go all in on being an entrepreneur and to help other entrepreneurs and to be a mentor and to help startups. And, and I left, you know, corporate setting and I left that, that world and I gambled on myself and I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to lead with my agenda. I'm going to live my passion. And it worked out really well. I, I now uh, do things that are really well aligned with my vision. I'm focused very well balanced, um, centered, I'm happy. So yeah, it was difficult because I had the security of a a pretty well paying job. And I decided that I wasn't going to do that anymore. I wasn't going to be eight to five Monday through Friday. I wanted to work on my own terms and live on my own terms and create something for my, for myself. So that was tough decision because I had to leave a lot behind and I had to kind of go into this, this new area of, inc- of uncertainty, but yeah, it's been awesome. Luke, was there a, a transition period there where you were trying to do both or any steps that you took to sort of prepare for that, that leap into full-time entrepreneurship? I, I did transition. So I founded the agency in uh, October of 2011 and I had a conversation with the president of the organization that, that I was working, who I reported to directly and uh, we had a conversation that it was in everybody's best interest for me to go live my passion. So we had a transition plan. I continued to work full time while I was developing the, the concept for the, for the agency and, and then went on my own. But along the way, I had had you know, side things that I was working on. I had founded a, a nonprofit. So I'd always had something that was on the side, uh, but it was during that transition that I really set myself up to be 
a solopreneur or to be uh, an owner of my own agency. Luke, talk about some of the strategies that you like to use when you are facing a tough decision. So uh, I, we talked about it a little bit, but because I, I had such a, uh, a relatively huge failure, I, I now am more patient with making that uh, decision. So I like to consider multiple data points. I like to look for people who have opinions that are opposite of mine, do more market research than, than and whether it's market research or just uh, gathering more information, I'm much more intentional with capturing information and data before I go into a decision. So I'm much more methodical, much more ma- mature, I think, much more patient and much more aware of the things that could go not so well. And Guy Kawasaki talks about it in Enchantment where he'll talk about doing a pre-mortem. So what could go wrong? So if the worst thing happened, what would that be? And how can I prevent those bad things from happening? So as I enter a decision, I like to consider different points of view and also consider what would the worst case scenario be and how do I prepare for that in in a pre-mortem fashion? It's interesting you mentioned that because we actually had somebody not too long ago mention that same concept of of a pre-mortem. And we all have, I think as humans, we have this confirmation bias where we, mm-hmm. we typically come up with an idea and then we just naturally, it's, it's not intentional, but we naturally look for evidence to support what we've already decided. That's right. And so being able to shift that, that mentality into this pre-mortem idea or the concept I was talking about with them was this idea of falsification where Mm -hmm. you have the ability to look for the pitfalls and look for the problems with your own idea. It doesn't mean that your idea is bad. It just means that you're seeing ahead and looking for that. I think that can make a huge difference in our decision making. Absolutely. And I think asking people questions like, why is this a bad idea? Or why do you think this wouldn't work? Or what's the worst thing about what I'm about to do? Um, <laughs> and I think using those data points to help inform the decision is critical. All right. We are going to take a quick break and hear from one of our show sponsors. When we come back, we'll talk to Luke about some of his favorites as it relates to his life as an entrepreneur. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate, but find yourself so busy that you don't have time for it? Do you have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out? At HanfordCapital.com, We help investors with passive real estate investments that project better returns than traditional investment vehicles such as the stock market. If you'd like to find out more about our passive real estate investments, visit HanfordCapital.com. That's H-A-N-D-F-O-R-D Capital.com. We will jump on a call with you to discuss your investment goals and to see if our investments are a good fit for you. This advertisement is not to be construed as an offer or recommendation to buy or sell a security. Visit HanfordCapital.com. All right, we are back with Luke, and I want you to give us a start on this series of quick questions and answers that we call the trifecta by telling us about your favorite technology that you use in business that helps make your life easier every day. HubSpot. So I use a a CRM. So because I'm connecting with so many people online, I need to keep those things organized. So I know what the last conversation was about. I have those 20 minute conversations I talked about. I micro mentor people each week. So in order to keep myself organized, I use uh, the HubSpot app and it's great uh, on the phone. It's great desktop. So it's, it's been a life changer for me. What's a favorite quote that you've heard that has helped you as an entrepreneur? A ship is safe in harbor, but that's not what ships are for. Hmm. And what's a favorite book that has helped you make better decisions as an entrepreneur? So, boy, um, a single book, I would have to say Enchantment by Guy Kawasaki. And Luke, what's the next thing for you right now on your vision or dream board? Writing the second book. So the first book, Live 20, is about the method of, of being more productive and aligning the activities that you do each day with, with, the, with goals and with visions. The next book will be more about the, this concept of connecting 20 and having conversations that are offline and connecting with people in real conversations. So that's the next big thing. And how can the listeners reach out to you if they want to find out more about you or perhaps your book or your, or your business? Absolutely. I'm everywhere. So LinkedIn is a good place to find me. Uh, you can hashtag live 20 L I V E the number 20. So hashtag live 20. You'll find me everywhere. 
Yeah, but LinkedIn, Twitter, anywhere where people gather online, I'm probably there. Well, Luke, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Thank you for taking the time to share some of your insight. And we look forward to following you and seeing you grow as an entrepreneur and perhaps having you on another show in the future. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Tough Decisions Network. Be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business, inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.